Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ricky and I'm a competitive ballroom dancer and dance sport makeup artist. Today, this is a look that I came up with. I decided I just wanted to make a whole video about how to make your eyes look bigger for the competition. And I get a lot of requests for dramatic makeup and for smoky eye makeup. And it's really hard to use a lot of dark eyeshadows without actually closing and making your eyes look heavy or sleepy or tired which is obviously not what we want to show on the competition. So I did a pretty dramatic makeup look. As you can see, there is a lot of dark eyeshadow, but the way that we applied it and certain angles and tips and tricks that I show you in the video really help to try to open your eyes and make them look bigger so you are awake and alert on the competition. Let me know if you want me to do a hair tutorial on this wave. I have a few pins in it now while I was filming. It kind of started to fall on my face a little bit, but that's because I didn't use enough hairspray because we ran out and I didn't feel like going to the store before filming. Um, but I could definitely do a tutorial for you if you wanted. I really hope that you guys enjoy this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below and what you want to see from me next. And feel free to follow me on my social media on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Ricky T Beauty. And without further Further ado, let's get into it. All right, so the very first step of this tutorial is going to be eyebrows. Something a little bit different we're going to be doing today because the topic of the video is how to make your eyes look bigger in competition is that how my eyebrow naturally is it ends about here. And usually I along elongate my brow quite a bit because I want to get that kind of like elongated shape. If I made my eyebrow as long as I usually do, it's kind of cutting off the shape of my eye. So I'm gonna keep my eyebrow a little bit shorter today, basically finish where it naturally is. So this space can be used to elongate the eye up rather than it being cut off by the brow. Today I'm using my Anastasia Beverly Hills Ash Brown Brow Powder Duo and my Morphe Jack on Hill JH43. This is what I use to fill in my eyebrows every day and for competition. So first I'm gonna go in with this and then in the end I'm going over with my e.l.f. Cosmetics Wow Brow um, Brow Gel and that's just gonna keep my eyebrows in place. Now this is super important to do on the competition and since I'm using a powder, I'm going to use a gel on top to keep them in place which is going to help them a lot from not rubbing off during the day. All right, now that my brows are all the way filled in, as you can see, usually I would definitely take this a lot more down, kind of just to thin it out. But like I said before, the more I bring this down, the more I'm blocking the potential to bring this eye out. There's still all this space here that we can use to make our eyes look bigger and more elongated. So before we move on to the eyeshadow, I'm just going to quickly use my P. Louise Base Pro in the shade Rumor 2.0 and my Morphe M224 brush just to carve out the bottom to make them look super crisp and prime my eyes for the eyeshadow. So as you can see, that is one eyebrow carved out from the inner to outer corner compared to the other one. This is not bad, but it's still a little bit messy, so I'm going to go do the other one and I'll be right back. All right, now both my brows are carved out and we are good to start on the eyeshadow. All right, so for this look, I really want an intense cat eye that's also kind of blown out and smoky on the edges. But because I want that super, super clean line, I am going to be using tape today. You can use whatever tape that you want. Personally, I'm using scotch tape. I wouldn't personally recommend it because there are many other tapes there that are much safer for your eyes. But even if you are going to be using scotch tape or even a makeup tape, make sure that it's still tacky, but it's not too, too harsh when you take it off. Now, the first thing that's very important is that we don't put the corner of the tape right against where our lower lash line starts. There's nothing wrong with that, but if you really want your eye to look bigger on a competition floor, we really need to accent the space above your eye and the space below your eye. So by putting this right against your lash line, you're kind of cutting off all that space below your eye. So make sure that you put a little bit of space in between there and that you're going towards your temple. So I'm not gonna go towards the top of my brow. because, like I said, that's gonna cut off how far you can blend out and upward to make this eye look bigger. All right, before we go strictly in with the eyeshadows, I'm going to place my highlight on the brow bone and on the inner corner. And this is the Barry M Cosmetics Fine Glitter Dust. Looks like 
this, I'm going to be using my Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH42 brush. And this is in the shade 15. And it's just a white, um, warm tone, pearlescent reflect. And it's one of my favorite pigments for competition ever to use. I am definitely bringing that basically all the way out to where this tape is towards the edge. But the main part is going to be right underneath the arch of your brow. That is going to be the biggest part that you're going to focus on. All right, so I just want to explain the main reason why we do highlight here and why it is so important in this tutorial is because we want to create space from where your eye starts to where your eyebrow is. So as you can even see from this side compared to this side, this eye already looks a little bit droopier because we don't have this super reflective light pulling this brow upwards. So the more space we create between our eye and our eyebrow here, and our eye and underneath the eye here, the bigger our eye is going to look. Obviously, that looks a little crazy, but this is the effect that we're trying to create with the makeup. And now we're just gonna do the same thing on the other side. All right, now that we added the highlight on this side and on the inner corners, I already feel like this eyebrow is lifted basically to the same level as this eyebrow. So as you can see, just placing the brightness there really opens your eyes and brings the eyebrows up, which creates more room for us to work with the eyeshadow to make our eyes look even bigger. All right, today in this tutorial, we are going to be using the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. And I know I use this in basically every single tutorial, but to be honest, this has absolutely all the shades we are going to need for this look. Of course, I have many other eyeshadow palettes that I love using, but I like to make it as simple and straightforward with you guys as possible to show you, you don't need a huge makeup collection. You don't need to go out and spend so much money on so many different products just to get one look that you're going for. You can definitely buy a very universal palette and use it for so many different looks, creative looks, competition looks, and, and hone your skills even just using one palette. This is my favorite one. It is absolutely perfect for competitions and that is why we're using it today. All right, so the first shadow that we are going in with today is this third shadow in the palette right here. And I'm taking that on a Morphe M441 brush. This is just a big, fluffy brush, super easy. I'm just going to throw that all over my crease, blending it gently up into the highlight area and blending it out all the way towards the edge of the brow and towards the edge of the tape. All right, now using the same brush, I'm going to go in with this shade right here. All right, now with this shade, I'm going to place it still in the crease, but I'm only going to place it on the outside portion. I'm not going to bring it in and I'm not going to bring it down. So I'm not going to put this all over messy everywhere. I'm just going to focus it on the outside and blending it towards the edge of the tape and the edge of the brow, keeping it beneath that highlighter shade, but still blending in, but make sure we don't bring it in. All right, so we're just going to do on the outer third. So I'm not going to hold my brush like this and go straight because that's going to disperse it everywhere. I'm going to hold it exactly like this so the shadow is only going up. All right, so the reason that we're doing this, hopefully you can see a difference from this eye and this eye. We don't wanna take it all the way in because we want to create the illusion that this part of the eye is getting lifted up. So we're gonna create space from where our lid is, where we're going to put a different shade and the outer one third of our eye slash the outer half, let's just say 50%. If I were to accidentally bring it down and it starts coming down, it's all going to look like it's one color and it's not really going to have that lifting effect that we want. Sorry if any of that's confusing. I really hope that this is making sense. All right, now that is all blended in on my Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH35 brush. It's just a slightly smaller version of the brush that we were using before. So as you can see, it's a little bit smaller, a little bit tapered to keep the color more concentrated. Now I'm going to go in to this dark reddish brown shade right here. This is gonna be the color that we use and we're gonna mix it with this dark purple and black. So this is going to be the darkest colors and this is going to be our medium color between the two transition shades that we already used. With this shadow, it's going to be the exact same idea that we just did with the dark brown shadow. So we're going to keep on the outer one third to 50%. We're really going to accent the hold the brush upwards to shoot the product upwards and not 
holding it here so it's just going to go everywhere and blend out we're going to keep it going upwards more on this outer third of the eye and then slowly when you have a little bit less product you're going to start to blend it out towards the edge of the tape and then even when you have less product you're going to start to blend it in just a little bit so we don't have the shadow just starting here and it's only blended out we want it to blend out and a nice transition in to this inner portion here you're just going to start with small circular motions pressing the shadow up and blending it into that neutral brown that we just put down now before we pull this color out towards the edge of the tape we're actually going to press it and put it down this way so we're creating a very um circular shape with the eye so we're bringing this part out and up and then when we have less and less we can take it and we can start to flick it outwards so it still has a nice transition to get that to get on the sharp wing now as i have less and less product on the brush i'm just going to start very gently blending it in towards the inner part of my eye just a little bit just little flicks and circular motions now if you need you can go back in with the same brush that you just used and one of those two transition shades that we first put down and just go over very lightly over this dark reddish purple shade and just blend out so we make sure we don't lose that transition color all right now you can see basically we've mapped out where we're going to have the dark eyeshadow where we're going to have the light eyeshadow so obviously where my lid is we're going to have a very bright pigment there to bring that part of the eye forward which is going to bring this back and the shape that we're using with the dark eyeshadow is to bring our eyes pulling our eyes basically upward to make them look more rounded and elongated out with that cat eyeliner now we're just going to do the same thing on the other eye all right now using the black shadow we're going to do our black in a few different layers so first we're going to go in with the black eyeshadow and we're going to just do basically the same thing we did with the dark purple shade but just keep it a little bit more compact and then we're going to go in with our pigment and then the second layer of black is going to be our black eyeliner, which we're going to blend into the black shadow. So once we put the eyeliner on, we're going to be kind of going back and forth to blend that eyeshadow in. So it's a very, very intense black fading into this purple. So I'm placing that right in the outer corner. And we're going to try to create kind of just a soft semicircle with the part of the eye that doesn't have any eyeshadow on it yet. And once we're blending this black eyeshadow, we're blending it basically down to where the tape is down here, a little bit up and then just a little bit out. Alright, now you guys are going to have to bear with me. I know it looks absolutely crazy right now, but it is time to put on the pigment. So I'm going to use my Peaches and Cream Glitter Base and a Morphe M434 brush. Now with this, I'm just going to place the base on basically all the part that is blank. It's gonna lightly blend into the black and then up and around, making a semicircle at the top. And then after I've placed that, I'm gonna go in with the base, whatever's in the cap, and just slowly build up so we have a nice bright center of the lid. All right, now that we have that huge spotlight, I'm just going to take a Morphe E18 pencil brush, looks like this, and I'm going to go in with that dark red shade that we used, this one right here, and I'm just going to softly go right above, so we're kind of creating a little bit of a cut crease look, but we're just accenting so it still shows a little bit of darkness above where we put that pigment. Right now it's time to create the shape of the eyeliner and then we can finally take the tape off. So I'm going to be using my Inglot Gel Liner. This is their AMC Eyeliner Gel in the shade 77, which is just black. And I'm taking that on a e.l.f. small angled brush, which looks just like this. All right, now the shape I'm going to try to create with this is you have to think of a triangle. So a triangle that is like this. So this point, the very, very top point is going to be our inner corner. Now the two edge points over here, my right hand and my left hand is going to be up here and down here. So this is the base. And then we have a nice line to the pointy corner and a nice line across the lash line. So that is the triangle, just like that. Now 
once we get to the end and we've kind of made this triangle shape, you can either bring it out all the way to the end of the tape and do a really extreme eyeliner or what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take the same brush that I used to do my black eyeshadow with. I'm going to take a little bit more of that black eyeshadow and kind of start to blend the black eyeshadow with my gel liner so there's not a clear transition like this is where the liner ends and the eyeshadow starts. I just wanted to make it as blended as possible. And you can go back and forth between liner, eyeshadow, liner, eyeshadow. All right, time for the most satisfying part of the tutorial, which is to take off the tape. Now that my eyelashes are on, we are ready to move on to the face makeup and then finish the eyes. But because I know this video is already going to be super long, I'm going to skip my face makeup today. In the future, I will be making a face-based tutorial, what I, what products I use, how I recommend using them, and layering them for competition for maximum um, wear throughout the day. But today is not that day, and I'll see you in just one minute to finish the eyes. Everything I use will be listed in the description below if you are interested. All right, I just finished my face makeup. As you can see, I'm definitely a lot darker, bronzier, and more sculpted, highlighted than before. So now we're going to go to the lower lash line. The lower lash line is really gonna help us open up our eyes and then we will be done. All right, so going back into the Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette, I'm going to go in with the second shade that I went into. We're going to skip the first shade. We're going to go straight to the second shade. And this is on a Morphe E18 brush. And I'm just going to put that from the outer corner where this black is all the way to the inner corner, all the way, just back and forth, really blowing it out. All right, now that that is super blown out, I'm going to go ahead and take my Morphe E36 brush which is basically just a smaller version of the E18, same brush, just smaller. And I'm going to go in with that dark purplish red shade that we used before. And I'm just gonna do basically the same thing from outer corner to inner corner. But since this brush is smaller, it's gonna keep it a little bit closer to the lash line. All right, now taking the same E36 brush, we're going to go in with the black shade of the palette and just do from the middle of my eye out to the black, blending it into the black eyeliner that we already have there. All right, now using my Inglot Gel Liner and my e.l.f. Small Angled Brush again, the same eyeliner and brush that we used to do the top eyeliner, we're going to do it in our waterline from the outer corner to the inner corner and creating kind of a cat eyeliner connecting this top eyeliner to the bottom eyeliner. As you can see, this side compared to this side, in my opinion, I think this side is already looks much bigger because we accented the very outside point of the eye and the very inside point of the eye. So you're showing this is the entire eye. As compared to this one, we only have the outside. And if you don't add anything black to basically surround the eye and create that final piece, kind of just looks like something is missing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. All right, now going in with my P. Louise base and my Morphe M250-0 the tiniest brush that I own. I am going to make another um, double cat eyeliner and I'm just going to do a little bit of white from the top point coming into the tear duct zone and from this point going up meeting to where that pigment is on top. This is really going to open the eyes even more creating, we've already created the outer point and the inner point but now we're just creating brightness like how we created the brightness on the brow bone we want to create the same brightness on the inner corner to open our eyes as much as possible and now as you can see how the white kind of just adds another dimension compared to this eye obviously this eye looks good everything is fine but this eye is kind of like okay even the biggest brightest possible eye that you can have all right, and the very, very last step for the eyes is going to be lower lash mascara or false bottom lashes. As I say in all my tutorials, I wish that I had false bottom lashes because I really think it would obviously, like I said, open your eyes even more. How many times have I said that in this tutorial? But I see it's becoming more and more popular for girls on the competition. I see in person and on Instagram a lot of the time, girls with the lower lashes. But every time I go to buy a pair, 
on Amazon or on Lash websites, they are always sold out. But for now, I am just going to use my L'Oreal mascara and we will be done with the eyes. Obviously, you can do whatever lipstick you want. You could do nude, you could do purple, you could do super dark red, you could do brownish nude lips. Sometimes I see that at competitions, which is getting pretty popular. Personally, I like to stay to the very bright colors, um, which like a bright red or a bright pink. So I'm going to be doing both today, but you can do whatever works for you or whatever matches your dress. So I'm going to use my Milani Color Statement Lip Liner in the shade True Red, and I'm gonna line all my lips in red. And then I'm going to go in with my L'Oreal Color Riche Matte Mandate Lipstick in the shade 712 on top. So it's gonna be red base with a pink on top. And then I am gonna go over it with my L'Oreal Infallible 8 Hour Pro Gloss. This is honestly reddish pink. It's not full red. It looks pretty red, but when I put it on, it does have pink reflect. And this is in the shade 305 Fiery. All right, you guys, this is the completed look. I really, really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned something new. Obviously, everyone wants to look really bright and awake on the competition. And sometimes when we have too many dark eyeshadows, it can really overpower and it can actually make our eyes look tired and closed, which is the opposite of what we are trying to show them. So I hope that you learned a few tips and tricks in this video to help get bigger, brighter eyes the next time that you want to achieve this on the competition. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really hope that you enjoyed and please let me know what you want to see in the future videos. Feel free to follow me on my social media, Ricky T Beauty and Ricky Taylor Dubovic on Instagram and on Facebook. And also I do have a TikTok page now where I do post some beauty videos on there. If you are interested, I'll have it here and everything will be linked in the description below. I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.